Prospects to Pros, sponsored by Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. I'm your host, Nate Tice, and today we're going to do a almost quarter point, almost quarter poll checkpoint, I guess we could say, uh, for NFL rookies, someone that stands out to both me and my co-host, as always, the man himself, Mr. Dane Brugler. How are you doing t- today, Dane? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it's hard to believe we're what, almost a quarter. Yeah, the whole 17 game schedule kind of throws off the math a little bit, I but uh, that's all right. You know, I, you know, as a as a family, we recently watched Little Giants. I, I love oh. that movie as a kid, and it was same. It was a lot of fun introducing that to my eight year old son, my oldest, and he's football obsessed at this point. I was thinking about it, uh, introducing my favorite movies growing up, especially sports movies. Uh, introducing those to my kids has become. Oh. My new favorite number one thing about having kids, it knocked down, uh, oh, we have to leave this function early because my kids, whatever excuse, it's knocked that down to number two. But still a strong contender. But uh, my new favorite uh, number one movies, uh, especially sports movies, you know, just reliving it through my kids, having them experience it for the first time. Uh, I mean, you're a movie guy, I, I know, Huge. like me. So I imagine that'll be something uh, you look forward to with your little guy. I cannot wait that and playing board games that that's like my two things. I cannot wait someone just to play games with (laughs) as I, uh, my sister abandoned me when she's two years older, she was like, okay, I'll hang with you and your friend Frank. And then once she like turned 12 and then that that was that, (laughs) it was like, yeah, you're on your own. But no, I, yeah, the movie stuff, I have Goonies poster right behind me. Like that's a movie. I can't wait. I, I think just seeing through the eyes, like all these movies I've seen a hundred times, like I can't wait to see Jurassic park with my son yeah. like that's one that like it's because that movie like got me into movies like that was magical to me as a child so i love that like i've actually had thoughts about it so i'm excited for that having a catch which is kind of corny but very excited for that but i agree with you that the getting to leave early excuse has been phenomenal so good. it's so as, good, yeah. oh as someone that's kind of uh homebody almost all the time now that is the best it's like okay yes. we can push this for another hour we're enjoying it right it's like okay we gotta get out five minutes five minutes hey yep. fussy he's getting fussy see ya, exactly. see ya. Like, nap time yeah. nap time yeah. or, and yeah. jack's uh-huh. just super smiling they're like okay he looks good to us <laughs> uh but anyways we're gonna be talking about young players i guess is a good way to put it young people uh we're gonna be talking about some nfl rookies and i just players that stood out to us at each position. Uh, so we'll go one by one, quarterbacks, running backs, all the good ones, even offensive line, which I cannot wait to talk about. There's a, there's actually a couple of guys that are, have been really standing out this year. But we're going to go position by position, name some dudes off, some players that have really impressed us so far this season. Dane, let's just start with quarterbacks. Let's start with the star position. Um, mm-hmm. Three players, three quarterbacks got drafted in the top four this year. How have those three been playing? Because I think, or who has stood out to you? And what are your thoughts so far on CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young? Yeah, and I think the the guy at the top, clearly, um, Ian O'Connell. Uh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> yes, C- that's right. C- uh, CJ, CJ Stroud. I mean, look, it, it's been a lot of fun watching him carve up defenses these last four weeks. Uh, he was a top five player for me in this class. Uh, I think he was number four overall. Uh, you know, Ohio State, he was so poised, so structurally sound in college and that has translated so well to the pro game he just has a natural rhythm to what he's doing out there his movements uh the way he uh you know works through his progressions the, his delivery his pacing it's it's all very rhythmic and it i think that is you know he hasn't changed you know with things yeah. speeding up it's still the same cj stroud and so uh and that's why i i think when we looked at him in college you thought okay at the very least, this guy has a high floor. You yep. feel about you know, the, the next 10 years, he's going to be a productive pro. You know, even if he's not going to be a no doubt about it pro bowler, and he very well might be. But uh, the fact that he's it just has this floor skill set, you felt really good about him. And so, yeah, I mean, Stroud has to be the first guy we talk about. Absolutely. Uh, he's been so that calmness that he played with in college. Um, I think some people even dinged him for sometimes uh, that I think as a pro, it's just, it's cranked up and how I described it on our Sunday show with Robert was comparing him to kind of how the Steelers felt. It just feels like a Bobby Sloak, the offense coordinator for the Texans and Stroud, they just have a plan on every play. Mm-hmm. 
not just what the the plan of attack is and what the play concept is, but Stroud knowing one to two to three. Oh, I'm hot on this play. Oh, I need to read out this play this way. Every play just feels calm and comfortable, and it and the players probably feel that way too. It's like, hey, this guy's going to find the right answer. I just got to do my job. Which you can just see the buy-in already. He's been he's been really, and I said this again on Sunday, a joy to watch because it's just yes. it's good quarterback play, and that's it's really cool because. Like you said, I thought he had a high floor, and I thought, okay, yeah, it seemed like actually is pretty decent, but mm-hmm. it's oh, it's a rookie quarterback. You don't know how they're going to enter the NFL. We think of these guys as some guys as pro ready, and they take they take an adjustment period. So far, he's just been, I, I think, just just great and as advertised so far. Um, the other guy, it, I, oh, sorry, no, I say, if you're a Houston fan, you're you're excited. I mean, you're I because you you think about the offensive line, it's been banged up. You think about the yep. receivers, it, it, it they've been good. I mean, Nico Collins is a good player. Uh, yeah. I liked him a lot coming out of Michigan. I thought he was a steal. And then the third round when they got him, uh, now he actually has a quarterback. You can get him to football, right. and that's been fun. Uh, Tank Dell, we'll talk about him here in yeah. a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's uh, – if you're if you're a Texans fan, you're excited. And if you're a Colts fan, you're also excited, right? Because of yeah. – uh, he, he was your number one quarterback in this class, right? It was, it was a kind of a 1A, 1B, and this is how I uh, half weighed it. I said with him, Stroud and Richardson, is that yeah. I said, if it was my money – I would be using, I'd be betting it on Stroud. But if I, it's somebody else's money, yeah, I'm going to be betting it on Richardson because I just thought the upside was ridiculous. But his floor so far has been fantastic. But what have you, what have you thought so far about Richardson? I mean, he, I think first and foremost, he's made the Colts, Colts competitive. And that's right. something that the, the last few quarterbacks can't say uh, in Indianapolis. I, the passing volatility, uh, you know, that's to be expected for a player with, I mean, we have to remember he was he had under 400 career pass attempts in right. college. You know, the, such meager experience that the bar was set pretty low because I think people understood there's, it's going to take some time. Uh, and, and we've seen that a little bit. It's it has been inconsistent. He r- right now he ranks 33rd in the NFL in adjusted completion percentage. But considering that he's just scratching the surface, oh, yeah. the explosive plays both with his arm and his legs have been just special. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, I think you just over the weekend, um, against the Rams, seeing Aaron Donald trying to struggle to bring him down. Right. Uh, I mean, that, that says a lot right there, but I, I, the fact that he has been able to create these explosives, uh, that, that, that says a lot. And so I think if you're a Colts fan, you have to be awfully optimistic about what he is going to bring to this offense, uh, as he continues to grow and become more consistent as a down to down passer. It, it's I, I thought the the running floor was always going to be there, and but right now the process is he's shown, and and I think their coaching staff's doing a great job. Yes. Just I mean, it does, it's not a mistake what's happening right now with the Eagles sometimes with some of their passing woes, or I would say inefficiency right now. But then what's going on with the Colts and just how comfortable Richardson feels, um, just as it's nice to see him doing some of the little things like checking the ball down and not just always hunting big mm-hmm. plays and going through the process and the progress. Like, like you said, this guy doesn't have a lot of starts, didn't have a lot of pass attempts. He is like the antithesis of what Bill Parcells used to say about what you needed at quarterbacks. Like right. you couldn't go any more. 30 opposite. career starts. And yeah. What was right. it? Uh, 60% completion percentage. Yeah. Right, that was senior, uh, senior uh, yeah, graduated. Right. He, was a, he was a Richard <laughs> sophomore with one year under his belt. And yeah, no doubt. And, and, but the fact that he's been, more tangible and more real and like as a real quarterback doing the real stuff, especially in the second half uh, of games has been really promising. And I, I think like, I mean, the ceiling is just exceptional. I I've been loving what I've seen. Like obviously the, the flash plays are just going to get tweeted out every single week, but mm-hmm. the down to downness has been a lot higher than I was even expecting. I was waiting to watch him until after the bye week. And now it's like weekly viewing because it's like, Oh, it's really cool to see him grow. Still has a couple sprays. <laughs> Don't sure. get me wrong, yeah. but the underneath accuracy is good. It's been better than I think people realize. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited, very excited about one A and one B at the quarterback spot. And, and let, I mean, let's also mention Bryce Young. I, I do think yeah. that I, he, he's obviously right third of this group so far. Um, f- his fair share of rookie mistakes, uh, three three yeah. games, did miss that one game, and you know that's part of this. That durability was a question mark because of the size. But I mean, I think anybody that's watched his tape uh, can see that he's going to be just fine. I, I mean, he has Smart. not been the number one problem there. I mean, the Panthers need to give him more help. Pass protection has been below average. Uh, the receivers have been okay. I mean, Thielen yeah. having that veteran presence has been has been good for him. 
but they just they're not creating any any explosive plays. And anybody that's watched Bryce Young at Alabama, especially two years ago when they had Jamison Williams, I mean they Bryce Young can throw it down the field. He right. can create those downfield plays. They're not doing that this year. And part of that is they don't have the time. And the other part is that the receivers aren't doing them in any favors. And the running game hasn't helped either. So I, you know, this is all part of, and I don't want to make excuses for him because Bryce no. Young has held the ball where he needs to get it out sometimes. So it's been a collective, uh, it's not just been one factor of the Panthers offense, why they're struggling. It's been a collective uh, blame game there. And so, how do they fix it the rest of the year? That's something that we have to watch closely. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, that's why they they have an all star team of coaches. Basically, that's they what it felt like going yeah. into the season. They um the because the O line is and they don't, don't have a ton of juice at the receiver position, and because the O line has kind of been very disappointing to me. I was actually pretty mm -hmm. optimistic about that unit going into the year, and I actually thought that's why I was like, this is pretty good for Bryce Young because the O line will be stout. Okay, okay, pass catchers, but he'll make it work. You have to do more tight condensed formations bryce young is a creator yes he is smart and i do think he is really good in quick game and peppering the ball out and accuracy but the next best thing he does is the creation but to create you need stuff down the field you need space you need him to be flowy yes. you don't want it in a half court offense you want this thing in a transition offense and they just don't have the horses for that right now or the means to use those horses so i am not like I see people already just bailing on him. No, he, he's no. smart. He's a good football player. It's just that right now, this is not conducive for what he's best at. And it, it, right. I think he's going to be fine. Accuracy and intelligence goes a long way <laughs> at the quarterback position. And he has that in space. Yes. I mean, genius level when it comes to processing and understanding what the defense is trying to do. And yeah. he will get better and better and better every yeah. single game as he adjusts to NFL speed. Um, I mean, I, you can go back year by year, and the best quarterbacks after four games. I mean, what, a couple of years ago, Mac Jones was the best rookie quarterback uh, right. after four games. I mean, the year before that, I think it was Gardner Minshew. I mean, like it's it, right. it's something that th these things will change, and I Bryce Young will be just fine. But I, I think it is fair to point out how the Panthers traded away a number one type of receiver with DJ Moore, their first right. round pick, and right now that's uh, the number two overall pick. Uh, the Bears having the first two picks right now. So that is as much a part of the conversation as just understanding what Bryce Young has done on the field. And that's something that, uh, you know, the context of that is really interesting with how they attack this offseason and getting more help yeah. around Bryce Young and the overall development of the young quarterback. Yeah, see, and again, having a coach that maybe has tweaked offenses before for his quarterbacks, especially because the Colts were trotting out a new guy every year. Uh, but with Frank Reich and that staff, that's what I think this offseason will be huge because they'll obviously, but they know what he'll need or they know what they'll need. And I think that's really good for that kind of vet staff. So mm. actually, I'm going to go to running backs next because I honestly want to see how you would go about this because this is a it's a good crop this year. It's a, it's a very fun group of rookie running backs. And I, do you want to start at the top with Bijan or do you want to go with Gibbs? I mean, which guy, how do you want to go? Uh, a, a chan like i always want to call it a chain but a chan like but uh where do you want to start this is this is this has been a fun group so far i'm starting with a chan um oh, man. i mean he is he's averaging a, a cool 11.4 yards per rush uh <laughs> he has the same number of forced missed tackles as Bijan, but exactly half the carries so this guy has not only been uh, you know, productive with that speed, but I mean, he's making guys miss. He's being elusive. Uh, he leads all rookies in uh, yards after contact. So uh, it's not just get him in space and he'll create it. I mean, he is breaking tackles uh, mm -hmm. legitimately. And so now obviously the offense and McDaniel, I mean, that, that, that is as much a part of this as, uh, as anything is the, the scheme and, and yeah. what they're doing in Miami, cooking up these uh, situations and, uh, just the overall, uh, you know, the way that they're calling plays. But I mean, give give H N credit because of uh, the way he. And then we saw this at A and M. I the speed, the vision. We talked about it last week. Uh, I mean, he is a really good player. And I mean, Bijan's been awesome. But I, I think we got to start with H N. He's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's they're using him almost like a. a I, I feel like I've said this term more times in the past couple of weeks than I have in the last 10 years, but they're using them like a flex bone kind of wing back and getting them tosses and everything out mm -hmm. in space and everything. But 
what you're saying too is about his vision and his uh, contact balance and and his just balance as a runner. Like he runs with perfect square pads when he runs between the tackles. It's really cool. Like he has good fundamentals. It's mm-hmm. that he's just uniquely wired. He's 185 and has world class speed. It's it's a unique skill set. Um, yeah. But his first touchdown against the Bills, he runs through a defensive lineman's side tackle yeah. and finishes the run. And it's like on top of it, he has great balance and square square pads. And then you just see the, of course, the rare speed. He's making offense alignment right. There's different ways to make your alignment right. He uses it with again world class speed and beats angles. He's been so much fun. Well, and uh, I think that a lot of people see the oh he ran track at Texas A and M. So this is a track athlete who's right. also playing. It, it almost reminds me of speaking of A and M. Ryan Tannehill was a receiver. Oh, so he's a receiver trying to play quarterback. Like, oh, like it's he. He was a, a football player his entire life. The, the yes. coaches they had to convince him to run track. So this right. wasn't it wasn't a situation where uh you know he was this this track athlete who uh you know the football coaches convinced him hey you need to you know come out to the football field too no it was the other way around so this is a, a football player through and through and man if he's able to stay healthy uh yeah. it's, it's a lot of fireworks it is I I think it, and that's the thing I think his skill set's sustain uh, sustainable I know the mm-hmm. explosive play rate and all that's not going to come down naturally but it's like uh, he does enough of the, I mean he's like first in success rate right now among all running yeah. backs and he's it's like catching six, the ball well too I mean yeah, he's, he's yeah, great. Yeah. That, that he does he well. hasn't dropped the ball I mean it's only like no. I think nine targets eight catches something like that but um you know he's done a nice it's job good. when called upon Yep. No, he he's a he's a real running back, but that just happens to have track speed, which is right. a great way that great way you're describing it. Well, let's go. Okay, reverse order, I guess. So, or uh, we'll start circle back through. So we'll start with Bijan, or go back to Bijan here. Bijan's been, right. I think, as advertised, uh, yes. hands, vision, power, speed, just a great combo. Uh, I don't know what else more to say because I've just gushed about him so much already. But have, have you anything that stood out to you with him, or anything different than you were maybe expecting? No, I mean he he we we both thought he was a special back and uh you know he he's played like it. I based off of how you uh, as a lover of uh Atlanta football right now, based on how you thought they would use him and how they're they are using him, how is that matched up? Um because I we, I know there was, you know, as we we talked about it on draft night, you know, as soon as yeah. Atlanta made him a top 10 pick, we thought, okay, well, how is this going to work? How is this going to fit? How are they going to use these pieces, you know, drafting uh, offensive skill players in the top 10, three straight years with Pitts and Drake London. And then Bijan, like, what is this offense going to look like? Um, I, I know you've looked at it. What have you seen with Bijan and how is that kind of lined up with your expectations? Uh, well, that was kind of always want to emphasize with people too, is that like, yes, we're excited about the positionless stuff and how mm-hmm. he is as a receiver. It's like, this dude is an awesome running back and on the ground. And they have, I think, and this is probably something I'll talk about later this week is they've kind of are figuring out exactly what their fastball is. They want to do a hundred things. And now they're realizing, oh, Bijan's our fastball. So we're going to use him uh, in the run game. It's not just zone. They're using him now on different type of runs that they they have, have kind of sprinkled in the duo stuff, which is really at you. That was kind of Algiers thing to start mm-hmm. the season. And now they're like, well, let's just let's have Bijan do it too. And so I think running the, the run game, I was curious what they would emphasize early with him. And now I think they're realizing, oh, he's good at it all, just like he was in college. So let's let go to work. Actually, he's my favorite duo runner i know this is so specific but this matters a lot to me that i've watched because <laughs> he just had no he, that's a running back run because they set up linebackers they get vertical they find different holes and he's amazing at it, so it's cool to see them sprinkle it in i think the pass game stuff has been a little they just put him on motion a whole bunch that back and forth motions run him to the flat a bunch and that's been kind of like okay i was expecting maybe a little more but as a check down player, that's where I thought he would give a huge boost to that offense. And he's been fantastic where he creates a first down, what you most running backs would get four yards on. Um, I'm just curious. I'm seeing some signs like what they use in the red zone and stuff. Like, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself for something I'm going to talk about later this week, but using him like in from the backfield on vertical routes. Like, so like mm-hmm. he's basically a tailback, but then they have him run like a deep corner mm-hmm. and they just started doing that. So I'm, it's like TBD. It's it, yeah. I, I'm, I'm seeing where they're going with it, but I, I want to see that it's kind of a dot 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 right now. 
Um, and, and, and I'm sure it'll continue to evolve throughout the year and oh, yeah. it'll, it'll go back and forth. It'll depend on who the defense are playing. And um, yeah. I mean, he has yet to score a rushing touchdown, which seems weird because he's been such, such a, a big part of that offense and, and so productive, but it, it feels like every week it, it, there's a couple of explosive plays that, yep. you know, pop up on Twitter and you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. This guy is, this guy's a rookie, but uh, yeah, he, he's already one of the, the best backs in the league. Like we thought he would be. His vision's amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go to the other uh, first round, first round run back, Jameer Gibbs. Uh, any any thoughts on Jameer Gibbs so far? I think he's been as explosive as advertised. So, uh, what, what have you seen of your of Gibbs so far with the lines? Yeah, I think there is, it's also another situation where they're trying to figure out how is the best way to get him these touches. Exactly. You know, I, I I think the workload hasn't necessarily been there. I mean, you, you figure when you draft a running back top 15, um, you know, he's going to be a major part of your offense. And, you know, to be honest, he really hasn't been. He's been more of that complimentary piece, which mm -hmm. at some point, and, and David Montgomery, I mean, he's a he's a really quality back, but at some point this year, are we going to see it be more 50-50, 55, 45? I mean, how is it that, that distribution of touches and making sure you're getting Gibbs the right amount of touches is going to be something that I think this offense might battle with, but you know what, as long as they keep winning games, I'm not sure that it's going to matter all that much. Yeah. That I, when Montgomery missed the game, he had a deep thigh bruise. Right. Uh, I was curious what the Gibbs workload looked like, like, okay, are they going to just plop someone else in Montgomery's role and then keep Gibbs the same kind of did. But it was still more, I would say, you know, that 60-40 split. I think that game is going to be what the split is always. I think once they're inside the five-yard line, it's going to be Montgomery's time, short yards, Montgomery's time. But as right. a receiver, he's been super efficient. They're running choice routes with him five times a game, and he's been very good on those. Um, he's a walk. I think I think they're just easing into him to be more comfortable running you know, consistently between the tackles in this last game, he did. So it's like, okay, okay. Uh, on Thursday night. So I mm -hmm. think they're just going to sprinkle more touches with them. Once they get more comfortable, once he kind of maybe gets used to that NFL kind of weight, I guess, or NFL style. Um, but I think they have to, he's, I just think yeah. he's too explosive to keep off the field. Oh, <laughs> he yeah. brings so many tackles that it, it's like, it, it's yes, it's only five, six touches. It should be 10, 12 touches locked in or uh, runs. I should say locked in every game. Well, that week two, we had nine targets. And then the next week when Montgomery was out, he had one target. And yeah. so it's just, it's a matter of, because I think that's where he's most explosive is in the receiving game. Absolutely. Um, making, getting these guys both on the field at the same time. I mean, uh, using Gibbs that, and anybody that's watched him play can see the explosiveness, how, how, how sudden his feet are, um, the vision that he has. I mean, it, it's all there. It's just a matter of deploying it in the right way. So right. It's going to be something that we, yeah, I mean, in terms of offensive coordinators, I mean, Ben Johnson's been, um, I, you know, among the best in the league this year. Uh, I mean, it seems like almost a certainty he's going to be a head coach uh, yeah. this offseason. So if there's anybody that can figure it out, I feel, I feel like this is the guy that can do it. I think he's in, I highlighted Johnson in a play they did um, this week, uh, a touchdown St. Brown on wind the clock on check it out on the YouTube. Uh, but it's, Ben Johnson too is that I think he is very realistic with what his players are. Mm. So I think he's not one of those guys going, I'm going to run a million things. I'm excited. He's trying to be realistic. It's a long season. And I think there's, I think Gibbs is going to get a huge boost after their bye week like a lot of classic staffs and where they revamp. Okay. We can, we're going to use this with him. He's good at that. So I think the arrow is only pointing up and it, that's the thing. I think I trust what Johnson and that line staff does. Cause I yeah. think they're, very it's a realistic. long season. It's long a long, season. long season. And you know, I, that doesn't, that's that's not music to the ears of fantasy football owners, but that's no. not that that's that's not how the Lions are uh, going to attack this situation. He's still going to affect games. It's just that the box score might right. always be there. Um, did any uh, the other running backs on day two? Zach Charbonnet, Tajay Spears. Anybody else that have stood out to you so far this year? Anyone on day three? I don't think so. uh, Bigsby's been an interesting. Tank Bigsby Tank, for the yes. Jaguars because he's gotten some of those uh, the, those red zone carries, goal line carries. Um, you know, I think uh, when we've seen Tajay Spears for the Titans, uh, he's been a nice change up to Derek. Henry. Henry, yep. um, have to give a shout out to J J uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, uh, the oh, yeah. YSU, Youngstown State, uh, undrafted free agent who made the team and has been uh, terrific. Now with Javante Williams out, yeah, um, you know, Sean Payton get... loves him. You can yeah. tell he loves him because he has him running choice routes. That's like that's I just say, Sean yeah. Payton's little baby. <laughs> his and, and his ability to go from catcher to runner is really quick. He's really yeah. efficient with that, and so. Um, yeah, as long as he continues to be reliable and dependable as a rookie, we're going to see more of him. Um, you know, even with that, 
number 38 number. Uh, I, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, he, he's been a good he's player. 30. Yeah. He's that. I know that's, that's what stinks when you're undrafted rookie, you probably got stuck with that. And it's like, <laughs> right. you can't go into the equipment room and go, Hey, can I change this? Uh, but no, right. he's been, he's been great. Uh, uh he, you mentioned uh, Roshan Johnson too. Um, I mean, he's been, it feels like they're going to use him more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it, it's like every game they're like, okay, yeah, we got to get him more. We got to get him more he's looks, good. more touches, more, more. Cause I, if he's, he's even more field, explosive than I thought he would be. He's he is I, good. I was so shocked he fell out of the day three. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I thought I thought yeah. for sure he was going to be somewhere on day two, probably yep. in the third round. I mean, just because he's he's so useful uh, as on special him. teams, pass pro as a as pass catcher out of the backfield. Uh, the power he has a running back, but he can make guys miss too. I mean, there's so much he might not be. He doesn't have a Bijan ceiling, uh, but he has just he could do everything and he does yeah. it uh, dependably. So to see where the Bears got him was an absolute steal. And yeah. um, I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. We're going to see more and more of him and as the I season think, goes on. Yeah, I think they're like, oh, this this guy's interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the last, the last little stat I'll close out the running back section with is that there's four running backs right now in the NFL that have gained five or more yards on first and second down over half the time. Three of them are rookies. Mm. A-chan then Nick Chubb, then Spears, then Charbonnet. And then it goes DeAndre Swift and then Bijan. So pretty yeah. good class. And we're we'll keep we can lift off more and more guys because that's how this class has been so far. Uh keeping up with the skill positions. Let's uh go to receiver. Uh just like we all expected. Puka Nakua, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, we, we mentioned it on that uh uh preview episode how Nakua... we are on record about Puka yes. Nakua. We are back he in was April. A... <laughs> a guy to watch. Uh, yes. Well, in April and then in August when we did the preview, yes. we, we talked about how, okay, this is a good situation for Nikua going to LA where, okay, Cooper Cup's hurt. He's going to an offense that wants to throw the ball. He's throwing to, or he has a quarterback who uh, is playing really well right now. Um, and Puka, okay, forget rookies. He's number one in the NFL in targets, uh, tied with Devontae Adams. He's number one in receptions, 39. And he's second in receiving yards, behind only a guy named Justin Jefferson. So he has been really productive. It's kind of weird. He's only found the end zone once. Uh, yeah. Now, it turned out it was that a was big a one. <laughs> pretty important touchdown. Uh, yeah. Won the game for him uh, over the Colts on Sunday. But, you know, and we mentioned this in August. Based on the film, gave him a third-round grade. But the major variable here was the durability, uh, yeah. the injury stuff, which just kept cr creeping up on him in college. And so I think that hurt him on, on draft day. I know it hurt him on draft day. Um, but even, even this year, he's been banged up. He's been on the injury uh, list. I, I think, you know, three of the four every, weeks, something yeah, like that. Every week except one, he was hurt. In yeah, camp. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, but you know, he's tough through it and yep. he's just, he's a perfect, he's perfect, uh, rookie for that situation, yep. uh, with where the Rams are right now. And, and they're using him wonderfully. I, I'm yeah. really loving the Rams offense right now. Stafford's playing as well as anybody, even if the stats don't show it, like as far as touchdowns and everything, it's like some of these you, throws, man, it's incredible. Him and Richardson was, that was, it was a highlight reel. It was just, yeah. it was a true laser show. I, I spent, I thought I was just going to breeze through that game last night when I was watching film and it took me forever to get through it. Cause I just kept clipped everything. Yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. But the, Oh yeah. That offense is a lot of fun. They're using Nakua perfectly. He is great working over the middle. He's a nice big target. He He's strong catching the ball. He's a good blocker. They're using him at the point of attack. It, it's cool. He, he truly, it, it's it's the common joke, but he truly is the successor to Robert Woods. Like he is like, as like per, could not be a better perfect fit for what Robert Woods did in that offense than Puka Nakua right now. Um, any, uh, any of the first round guys been standing out to you amongst this group of receivers or uh, what kind of, again, we'll reverse order this or start back at the top. Yeah, I think you know Zay Flowers. Um, yeah. he, he's uh, behind Puka in terms of the most rookie receptions up to this point, um, and he's been electric with the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he has a drop yet, so you know he's been dependable. Um, I, especially when you when you look at that uh, receiving depth chart with I mean, Rashad Bateman's never going to be able to stay healthy. It's just nope, I, I think we have to accept it. That's it. Um, Odell Beckham, same type of deal, and but Zay Flowers has been there week in week out so far through September. Um, and, and that's been a lot of fun to see. I think it's, that's only going to continue to grow his chemistry with Lamar and how they that's best right. use his skill set will be fun to watch. Um, you know, the, the, Jordan Addison's had some nice moments. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we think Quentin Johnston with that offense, um, you know, with, uh, Mike Williams going down, how does 
uh, you know, the rookie step up now and getting more looks, more targets in that offense will be something we watch. Um, I, but I, I wanted to go to a day two pick and tank Dell. Uh, he is second behind Nakua in receiving yards among all rookies. Um, he's got two touchdown grabs so far. The size was obviously something that was a sticking point for a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of teams are just not going to draft a player that undersized, but when you are uncoverable because of your speed, that's that's where you make a difference. And yep. so far, uh, so good for Tank Dell. Oh, yeah. And Stroud loves him. Uh, and Stroud, yeah. It's it's cool to see a quarterback in the ball where it should go because Dell's winning a bunch. Yeah, like I, I agree with Zay Flowers. He's getting targeted a bunch. I know people were kind of making fun of the heat map last week where he was just targeted a whole bunch of short throws or two weeks ago, I should say. He's getting used all over the field. You can tell Munkin loves him. You can tell Lamar mm-hmm. loves him. Third down, gadget plays. There's one-man routes. They're designing everything for him. So I don't think that's going away. Um, any thoughts on uh, <laughs> Dontavian Wicks for the Packers uh, out of Virginia? Because um, I know when I watched him at the Clemson – or Clemson – it was, was a Clemson offense at Virginia – didn't see anything like this. I mean, I saw flashes, but he's been really kind of doing some things. I was just curious if you had any thoughts on Wicks that he's because he's been a kind of a pleasant surprise as he's gotten some more polish. Yeah, I know he was a guy that has had so much ability. It's just the the consistency level wasn't there. Yeah. And that was a product of that offense. Um, I mean, the quarterback was not good, um, but he just did not have the senior year that a lot of people expected. And then, you know, the offseason didn't go quite as well. Uh, you know, the the combine wasn't great. His pro day wasn't great. It was it was OK. Yeah. I mean, it was good, uh, but the 40 times weren't great. And so um, but he went to a spot where there was going to be opportunity. Right. Right. In Green Bay, where, uh, you know, Christian Watson's been banged up. And, um, you know, they've got such a young group of receivers with Jane Reed, um, who's also part of this conversation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Wicks, when he's had opportunities, has done some nice things. I mean, he's a good size receiver. Um, you know, he only he's has like 80 kick. yards, guys. But I, I just yeah. see the Packers are starting to y- use him a little bit more. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. And when you have a catch radius like he does, because um, right. he, he he just does, there's not a lot of polish to his game. You know, that, okay. and that's something that you have to work through uh, as yeah. a young player. Um, but when you have, uh, you know, an offense that needs somebody to step up at receiver, uh, you know, it, it, this is a guy that has a talent. It's just a matter of, can he grow up quickly with a young right. quarterback? And, you know, if you playing receiver in the NFL is such a, you better be where you were supposed to be or you're not going to be on the field. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's it's a very timing-based thing. And so far with Wicks, I think they're easing him into it, but yeah. he hasn't stubbed his toe yet. And so that, that's, that's a, that's a, a good sign it. for him. That's a great way to put it. Uh, yeah. No, I, I was just curious because he, yeah, well, I've watched the Packers a good deal and I was like, okay, he looks better than I ever expected. So um, I was just he, curious. I, he went exactly. Are. Yeah, I gave he him went a, where, a, He went where he should have got. I, yes, I gave an early fourth that. round grade. It, you know, I had went, a fifth. <laughs> so right, I was, well, not, yeah. So it was, he, yeah. He went exactly <laughs> where I think he should have went. And, you know, that it's something where I, I'm still not convinced he's going to be a, you know, someone that's going to, you know, you're going to be dying to give a second contract to. But, right. I was just curious. He's going to have the opportunities in this offense. And so it'll be, he's definitely a guy to watch the rest of the year. Yeah. A couple other guys. I, yeah. You already shouted out Jordan Addison. He's been, yeah, I, I think a chain mover, which I think mm-hmm. is that exactly what that offense needs. He has six first downs this year. Five of them came on third down. Um, <laughs> it was nice. seeing. <laughs> so we know when he's getting targeted and uh, right. a lot of them are against zone. He's exactly what they need in that offense. Hey, we're getting zoned because they're clouding Justin Jefferson. Okay. Hawkinson and Addison go to work and he's right. been, I think doing great. Um, yeah. Zay flowers. We mentioned Michael Wilson for the yeah. Cardinals. He had a good weekend. Been, yeah. He's been, had a good weekend. He's been a nice, pleasant player for them. Good blocker. Another kind of bigger guy in a small class. Mint Marvin Mims for the Broncos has been a uh, kind of just oh, a, yeah. <laughs> explosive as you could be. At one point he was averaging like, 30 yards per route run or something ridiculous <laughs> something like Goodness. something that broke the scale like 17 yards per route run something ridiculous well, um, right now it's 27 yards a catch so it's i mean it's it's still crazy and, and he only has nine catches so yeah uh you know how they it, use him more and more will be interesting um it, going back to michael wilson he was kind of in that puka nakua where yeah. the durability stuff is I what together, you really worried so. about uh yeah. but as long as he's on the field and staying healthy he's another guy at the senior bowl that you couldn't cover him. He he had an outstanding week in Mobile, and 
if he stays on the field, if he stays healthy, yeah. Cardinals have a good one. Cardinals have a, a guy that you can slot in as a starter moving forward. Yeah, no, it, it's a fun group. Josh Downs is stepping up. Uh, him and Richardson yep. have some chemistry. Trey, your guy, I know you're a Trey Palmer fan. He's been oh, a yeah. red zone. He's been a red zone monster. Like he's been mm -hmm. great. Like he is great catch radius, very springy. Yeah, fun class. Uh, yeah, this was always was it. They didn't kind of have that true ace in this class. But again, there's a lot of useful players. And yeah, a lot of useful players are stepping up already. And we'll see, you know, guys like Smith and Jigba. And, you know, we mentioned yeah. Quentin Johnston. Like these guys, as, as the season goes on, they'll start to emerge too. So, uh, yeah, this will be a receiver class that I think well, it, it won't be like two years ago when, you know, Olave and Garrett Wilson. And I don't think it'll quite be like that, but it'll still be a, a group of productive players the, uh, for as first year well, players. Like you said, it's opportunity. Puka Nakua slots in the right. Rams. They got nobody. Jordan Addison, you know, that was ready made for him. JSN's mm -hmm. got two other bona fide receivers to play with yeah. and other tight ends, you know, so it's it's all about opportunity early on. So, yeah, not damning at all. Speaking um, of opportunity, uh, Sam Laporta moving on the tight end. Uh, love that transition. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I mean, good. that's the, the Lions. You know, it was, it was interesting at moving on from TJ Hawkinson. We thought, okay, maybe they draft a tight end at some point in the draft, but we didn't think it would be that quite as early as they did. And even went then, it was surprised they took Laporta over Michael Mayer. But yep. Laporta's been getting those opportunities. He's up to 27 targets already in four games. Yeah. Um, and he's responded nicely. He's been a he's been a really quality player for them, both as a receiver and as a blocker. Yeah, I, I, I knew he was a good athlete and everything, and I knew he'd be a good receiver. But it's just that even his play strength as a, as a receiver has been very nice. Um, the play, he had the big catch and run. Um, actually, it was highlight this in that wind the clock video uh against rasul douglas where he's just ripping through douglas's press and it's mm. really cool to see that and yeah that that's the thing if you want to be receiving only tight end this nfl uh, modern nfl like defenses are going to throw db bodies at you you have to beat those guys and he's beating a corner so it's like right. oh, okay <laughs> we're on to something here um yeah this this michael mayer's kind of just been used as a blocker and check down like I, I feel like I haven't seen him run a real route in that offense with the uh, with the uh, Raiders. Don Kincaid is getting used as an auxiliary pass catcher, but it's been perfect for him. And they're really, they're I like how they're using him as a blocker right now, which I think is right. they're very they're using him right right now. But I think he's gonna have some games where he's gonna pop off. I thought this last game was gonna be one. He kind of did in the first half, and they just kind of didn't need him. They just spammed yeah. Stephon Diggs <laughs> for the rest of the game. Uh, but yeah, this tight end class has been really fun and interesting. What, what are some other ones that stood out for you so far? Well, I just real quick on Laporta, he was one thing that I loved about him is he's always available. That that was yeah, his. Yes. That's what I loved about him at Iowa. Uh, it, it didn't matter it, what route he's running; he was always available. And then he was just a perfect Detroit Lion, you know, Dan Campbell type of guy. He almost came out after his junior year, but he went back to school. And he told scouts the reason he went back is because it was important for him to be a captain. I mean, talk about a Dan Campbell guy. This, this is right. this is that what he is. Um, and he was. The only tight end in last year's class that had more than 20 forced missed tackles. So he was a guy that could do something after the catch. And they all came against toughness. Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, at least half of them. Uh, yeah, in that bowl game, no question. Uh, but it, he had a knee injury. He had a meniscus yep. uh, last year. And he rushed back so he could be back for the bowl game. So this is a guy that that cares. I mean, he, he's a perfect fit for that culture, but also yeah. what they want to do on offense. Um, and, and so, yeah, that that's looking like a – a pick that's really working out. I mean, I think we're going to hear more from Luke Musgrave and yeah. Dalton Kincaid the rest of the way. Um, but it's been fairly quiet from those two guys over the first month. Yeah. Uh, and Musgrave, I mean, the Packers freaking love, I mean, they're trying yes. to use it there when they have he, he got hurt on he got Sunday. Concussion. So there's yeah. A, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound bad. It's not like a soft tissue or anything like that. He's had right, before. Right. So it's like, okay, um, concussions aren't great, but anyways, it's a different injury. They've had in the past, but he, they, when they use a shot play, they're designing it for him, not anybody else. I know Christian Watson's been hurt, but it's for him. So I, I think he's been a lot better as a, every week he's gotten better as a blocker. So it's like, yeah, his, all these guys, arrows are pointing up. There's not any of these guys that, at the top that I've been like, oof. Not what I thought. It's just it's opportunity, <laughs> you know. Where I'm like, oh boy, I missed that one. Um, right. so I think it's just again, it's opportunities that reflects in the box scores. Um, uh, also, jo shout out Josh Wiley getting a touchdown this past yeah, week. first touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ah, good for him. Opportunities. That's right. Yeah. Hey, Titans. Titans need pass catchers, so we got him right there. Yeah, um, he's got two whole two targets in his career, and hey, he caught both of them. Wouldn't be in a touchdown. That, that you love to see it. <laughs> 
I love it. my dad. I think that's like my dad's uh, slugging percentage as a pass catcher. He only has like, I don't know, like 30 some catches, but like 13 were touchdowns. Like <laughs> it was just great. those one yard touchdowns in the red zone. They were the best. Uh, all right, let's move on to offensive line. Last position for the offensive players. Um, any interior guys stand out? There is actually been, there's one pleasant surprise for me, but I'm curious where maybe you go uh, for your interior guys, Dane. I mean, Skronsky looked great week one and then um got banged up uh so we haven't seen him since uh but he was he was outstanding in that game um It'll be, it's one of these where it's like he's gonna be fine <laughs> like yeah. I've, already, I've already moved on <laughs> right exactly he has been exactly what you thought uh yep. he would be so i you know i don't know the joe titman's actually been getting he actually got on the field the last two games yep. due to injury and i want to ask you about that. i was expecting more um, you know, of a rookie curve for him just because he is a younger, younger player. Um, and I thought it'd take a little bit wa- uh, more of a more time, more experience for him to get there, but I thought he's looked outstanding, yeah. uh, in the two, two games that he's played. Um, I, I, you know, Cody mock's been okay, uh, for, for, uh, for the, uh, for the bucks. Um, there a couple of the, the run blocking stuff hasn't quite been there in terms of finishing blocks, but in, he's fallen off. He's, you know, that some of that balance needs to fix and, and but you've seen it in pass protection. He's held up yeah, pretty well. Exactly. So, I mean, that, stronger. That's all yeah, I thought. Right. Robot exactly. That, that, that's exactly. With them right now. And I'm, I'm not sure how much stronger he can get, but I think they're, yeah, he, he can get there. Um, Osiris Torrance in Buffalo. Um, I talk about a perfect fit with him in the second <laughs> round. I think that that was worked out really well. Um, and then at the tackles, I mean, the Ohio state tackle tandem with, uh, Dewan Jones getting thrust in action with the Jack Conklin injury in mm-hmm. Cleveland. Uh, and then Paris Johnson has, you know, for a guy to be the first tackle drafted, uh, I think Paris Johnson so far has lived up to it. Oh yeah. Paris Johnson's been a delight that <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's especially bumping out the right side, right tackle, which he never Georgia. played before. Never yeah. knew. Yep. And he's, he's so young and he's so mm-hmm. long and you could see. And you've mentioned this before, and that Cardinals team, the Cardinals team's got some good vibes right now, even though they just got just got whitewashed by the 49ers. Right. Uh, but they they have some good vibes. They're doing some really cool stuff on offense and defense. And Paris Johnson's bringing an attitude to it, and it's really cool. And seeing him celebrate, his guys won a lot of games in college, and that matters going mm. going to a team like that. And you can see it. Like there was a touchdown where he how he celebrated was hilarious like he was just so into it. he's fist pumping every he's high-fiving every guy it was, it was really cool to see yeah, yeah. that was top, a that was a red zone play yeah 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 yeah, yeah. on top he screamed so like yeah it looked like predator screaming to the to screen That's right, <laughs> screaming yeah. to the clouds um but it's honestly I, I have been really encouraged by what i've seen from him i actually thought anton harrison looked okay he's given up the it's every pressure he's given up has turned into a sack it's like he's the least luckiest guy as far as his pressures i think it's like he's given up uh, going to last week anyways it was like he's given up six pressures and four of them were sacks mm. it was like he's so he's gotten some unluckiness there but i actually think he's been better baseline because i thought he would be a project than i was expecting um but i was gonna bring up interior wise steve avila for the Rams. yes yes he has been good he i have been good I yes, he's hit the ground running. He is day one against the Seahawks, and even just when I checked out with the Colts, been a plus player for them already. And that that's kind of I liked him, but that's been even surprising, I think, for me. And I'm pretty sure he, I uh, at least as of last week, he led all rookies and just total snaps played. I mean, he has been <laughs> out there from day one, played every yeah. single snap, and he's been a quality player, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's been it's been an interesting group. I, I, I've liked it and. I love this next year's class of tackles. Uh, so oh, yeah. flipping over to the defense, let's just stick to the D line, stick to those fronts. Uh, defensive tackles or interior defense line. We'll start there. Uh, who stood out for you? And I, I, I think there's a pretty easy answer here. Pretty easy. I mean, like, going into the combine, um, and Jalen Carter was the number one player. I mean, before the arrest warrant stuff, all the off field stuff became public. Carter was the number one overall player uh, on on my board, and I think a lot of teams. And and even then. I, I think I only moved him down to like number three because he's just, he's yeah. too good. It, you, too good. And even with the off field questions uh, and, and I understand why some teams, you know, passed on it, but man, this guy is uh, he, he has 20 pressure so far. I easily leads all rookies. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's second among all NFL interior defensive linemen, just behind Aaron Donald, who has played a lot more snaps uh, than Carter has. Um, yeah. And the, the line that I always used talking about Jalen Carter as a prospect was, the the block destruction was special and it's not just power it's not just quickness it's not just smarts it's not just skill 
it's all four of those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the last line of my report on him is he has the talent to be a top five player in the NFL at his position in it pretty quickly at some point during his rookie contract. So far, he's well on his way. It's there's nothing to be dissuade pre pre draft evaluations no. with him. He, uh, I saw the twenty pressures number because it's, it's in the top ten uh, among all defensive players right now. <laughs> And so I, I looked, I was like, okay, I, I think he has six hits or I think it's like four hits and 16 hurries. Cause that's, that's what you combine for pressures. So I, I was like, okay, that's a lot of hurries, you know, 14 mm. or whatever it was 16. So I, I looked at every single one and I literally did this yesterday. Yeah. Those are hurries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those are him winning, demolishing the offensive lineman and that quarterback getting moved off the spot or running out of the pocket. And it is, it's really cool. Cause like, he, you, he's that classic defensive lineman. They feel it out on the first drive, the first time they play. Okay, how's this lineman playing me? How's this lineman playing me? And then the second drive you see that he's out there, it just clicks and he explodes right. that first third down snap. He's throwing the guard because he's getting used to the, the cadence. He's getting used to everything. This way Aaron Donald is always so good at. And then, But that's showing just awareness of what offenses are trying to do to him. I was like, oh, my God. Like you said, it's the total package. He's been yeah. – yeah, and it, but even even effort. He ran down a screen. 20 I was gonna yards, say, like, yeah, that that was something that got mentioned, right? During well, yeah, the draft that the process, that was, was something. I was like effort. I was like, what? Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I there was there were times where he was banged up, and like, you know, especially yeah. in the Ohio State game, um, uh, the the playoff game. That was something that people brought up. Was you know, he didn't look like he was going full go, and he he played career high snaps in that game. Like it, there were times where he was fatigued, but it wasn't like a. Hey, I'm just going to take this one off. I mean, in my motor, right. you know, it, it wasn't like a question of effort. It was just, he happened to be fatigued in that game, but it wasn't a question of uh, him not, not trying. I mean, it was something right. that uh, rarely popped up on his tape. So uh, yeah, th- this is a guy that uh, the effort has been there. Um, the way that they're using him is helping him stay fresh, but I mean, it, it, he's, not, he's going to be hard to take off the field as we uh, it's go out throughout the, throughout the season because he's just too valuable. So he's played snaps wise. He's 50% is the highest amount of snaps he's played in the game so far. So okay. 40 snaps, 28, 21, 36. In that Ohio State game, he probably played 28 snaps in a quarter. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, yeah. that's the difference between NFL snaps and, and college snaps. So that's why you can see this juice for more of the games. And that's, I never got that effort thing because I heard that ding too. And I was like, I always want to make sure, you know, some of these top guys, that's, that's when you, that's the one warning sign that you see. And I, I watched, I was like, I don't see any of that effort issues. I, he brings it. Um, but outside of Carter, any other interior defense alignment that's stood out for you so far? Um, I, I, I want to give my one shout out to Keanu Benton, but uh, mm. I, I, I'm curious if any for you, um, cause the bears have a couple guys and I'm not sure <laughs> which one has done anything for me for uh, first, like Dexter has done a little bit, but I'm curious yeah. if you have any guys step up. Uh, for me, because I mean, Jalen Carter was number one among these different defensive yeah. tackles. Number two, in my opinion, was Brian Brzee. And yeah. I think I think he's been the second best defensive tackle among these rookies so far. Um, I mean, he's he's just been consistently solid. Uh, you know, watching the Bucks game uh, on, against the Saints on on Sunday, I mean, he, I, probably his best game so far. Had a sack, um, consistently was uh, doing the right thing, being in the right place, uh, whether, you know, defending the run or when he was able to rush a passer, um, had a handful of, uh, pressures in that game. So Brzee has been I, I, for, especially being a late first round pick yeah. has been a nice addition to that defense. He had a good game against the Packers. Uh, it was, yeah. uh, he had some real standout moments. So great shout out there. Uh, yeah, that's Saints defense overall. The offense is another story, but the defense overall right. this year, the defense overall this year has been very, very fun, and some really some young players stepping up at all three levels. So really fun defense to keep an eye on if anyone hasn't watched them yet. Uh, maybe just turn off when the offense is on. Uh, but I uh, was kicking out to the edge. Uh, I, I think Will Anderson's been fantastic, but I'm curious your thoughts on Anderson and any other edge players so far this year. Yeah, we got to start with Anderson, right? I mean, it's yeah. been he, he's been the top, um, you know, rookie edge rusher so far. Um, I, I think, but I also want to mention Byron Young uh, for the for the Rams. Um, he, ah, he was a guy, yeah, you do. <laughs> he, he was a guy that is he was so explosive uh, at, at, on the Tennessee tape. Uh, now, the secondary moves, some of the counter moves. Right. Um, if you if you they were able to get him off that initial track, he was he struggled to get back on track but it's just a hard guy to slow down when you're that explosive you have that first step quickness um so yeah byron young and then 
Tuli Tuli Pelotu uh, with the Chargers. Um, he, he looks leaner. He looks meaner. He looks faster. Um, I mean, he his ability to and he's we mentioned it last week, but he's the youngest one of the youngest players in this draft. Yep. Uh, but he has a very good understanding of block destruction as well. Uh, where do you put his hands? How to set up uh, uh, blockers with the way he attacks them? Uh, not tipping his hand too early. Uh, I think we've seen that consistently. So yeah, great call. It, using him uh, as kind of that third rusher. And then, you know, with Joey Bosa out, he sees more snaps. So he has been a, a nice surprise here uh, through the first four games uh, with Will Anderson, Byron Young, and, and then Tui Pelotu. I think those three guys have stood out above everybody. That, that's the same three guys I was going to talk about. I think Anderson's been great. Uh, real tone setter player. That's he's a, exactly a lot of these guys. And I, I mean, it's just like I've been as advertised so far. It's like maybe just because it's just after the draft, they're still fresh on it. But Anderson getting his ears pinned back has been awesome. He's good yeah. against the run, of course. But as a pass rusher, he's been very disrupt disruptive. He, sometimes he doesn't get the sack and everything, but he's doing a lot of good stuff. Um, it's cool to see, like, and this is sometimes you just can't always look at age. You have to look at experience. But like Thule and Byron Young, Thule's so young. And Byron it's Young's opposite, 25. right? Uh, and but both of them are working out their games and getting better, which is so cool uh, yes. just to see those types of players. I, I think Young's been great. He's explosive. Um, he's ch- He tried to chase down Anthony Richardson a couple times, which also speaks to Richardson's speed. <laughs> but he has been, he's been a good player for him so far. I've been really- He's been a, a better run defender too. And that was the big knock on Byron Young is sure. you, you could run to his side of the field. Uh, Offense has felt pretty confident doing that, uh, even at Tennessee um yeah. in college but i think he's done a better job of staying one step behind so he can yeah. be in the right position and then when he you know maybe was out leveraged just a little bit use that quickness that he has that that speed to still be a factor so uh still needs to get better but i think he has yeah. been a better run defender than what we projected him to be this early as a rookie I, I totally agree. He's been, I liked him in the preseason. That's why he was first standing mm-hmm. out to me. And, and he's been better. I mean, obviously you guys get better from the preseason, but just leaps and bounds better already. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought he was going to be like a DPR and he's played right. 91% of their snaps. So it's like, he, yeah, I didn't know that. That's asking a lot. Yeah. That's asking yeah. A lot. He's, he's, but he, he needs them, but he's, he's, mm-hmm. you can see it paying dividends right now, but yeah, really fun player to watch. Yeah. Um, going to off ball linebackers. I, I'm actually curious who you're going to shout out here. I think there's one guy because I knew he was maybe a little one of your babies for this draft. So I, I, I was yeah. curious if you're. I, I was curious if you're going to give him a shout out. Uh, well, let's see. There were I think 24 off-ball linebackers drafted in April. Uh, somehow Ivan Pace uh, uh, wasn't one of them. And look, I, I coming out of Cincinnati, I get why he wasn't. Uh, a top 100 pick. I get it. Mm-hmm. He was undersized. Scouts had questions about him. Uh, could he drop in coverage and hold up? Could he, because uh, he won so much in college downhill. Could he do that as a smaller player in the NFL? Could, could he even play special teams uh, consistently in the NFL? So all those concerns and he goes undrafted, but despite those concerns, he was just too good on the Cincinnati film for him to, uh, go undrafted. So, you know, the instincts, the play speed, he has an urgency, uh, to, to the way that he plays. I mean, he, he is a UFC fighter. Uh, that, that's, that's the best comparison I have for him out there. He's so violent with the way he plays. It has translated really well for him, uh, with the Vikings. He, he has been so much fun to watch. Yeah, no, he's been all over the place. I thought he was going to be a classic down, like, even though he's a smaller body, a guy that was just always downhill, but it's kind of like, you know, you can, get him seeing red and so he comes yeah. downhill and you get hit with play action or motion or everything but he is getting better and just aware he's just he's a football player he's what mm-hmm. you want at linebacker he's a football player he, gets, he makes everyone else around him better and, he's and he aggressive. does he doesn't miss tackles he nope. is aggressive because you're right he is absolutely aggressive but he doesn't miss tackles either i mean he no. at cincinnati he was not just a tape guy i mean he filled up the stat sheet it was yeah. over over 100 tackles um 20 tackles for a loss uh i mean he was an all-american but even more than that was the the tape and how every he was everywhere um, at the Senior Bowl watching him cover because that's always a big thing for linebackers during Senior Bowl and uh, All Star practices. <laughs> that, can like, you cover a running some back? Some guys get put put on a spot. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's so bad. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it is. You're you're one on one with a running back and you don't know which direction he's going and yep. you know you, you don't have the luxury of uh, understanding you know the 
the leverage of a, of a play. It's just a, it's a practice rep. So you don't know what's going to happen, but he held his own. And I thought, okay, this is a guy that I understand why he's not going to be draft. Like, you know, I heard from a lot of Bearcats fans telling me "Oh, first round. He's not going to go first round. He's not going to go second round. He's not going to go third round. But once we get to day three, I think yeah. that's okay. Worth the, the gamble at this point. And nobody did. I I was I really surprising on draft weekend when that happened. Uh, and it, it's not like he tested bad. I mean, he ran a, in the four fives. I mean, he was tested fine. It's just he was not a big player. And there were concerns about what exactly his role was going to be. But he was too good of a football player for him just right. to completely fall out of the draft. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, just day. I, I thought at first it was just a little bit of Vikings hype on Twitter going on where they're mm. like, oh, we'll check out our UDFA. He's so good. It's like. You guys are starting a UDFA. Okay. <laughs> All right. right. Is that right, where you right. want to be? But it's like, no, he actually looks like a nice, if he was drafted in the third round, I would have been like, yeah, that looks like, yeah, nice. That's exactly, that's cool. I, exactly. Um, speaking of maybe day three undrafted linebackers, what about your guy, uh, Henry Toa Toa? Yeah. Uh, he, he's yeah. been, I was wondering, he, I was wondering if you're going to give him a little shout out here. I, I was going to yeah, these are two of my favorite linebackers in the draft with Pace yeah. and, and Toa Toa. And I mean, they've you played better time. than, Jack Campbell, then I mean, Jack Campbell's been more of a part time player. I don't think he's really, yeah. he's, and he's played man. well when he's been on the yeah. field. He just hasn't, yeah. they haven't relied on him to be they're trying that. to keep him in coverage right now. And, and, he, he, and right, all the right. others. <laughs> so it's a lot of passing. Yeah. Guys. Kind <laughs> of like a matchup player. Right. Yeah. Yep, so, yep. but Toto leads all rookies in tackles. Um, and he's also missed pl- his share of tackles, uh, for, for the Texans, but he's played well. And, and this is yeah. what I thought he was the instinctive player. He's, you wish he a type of linebacker that you wish was a little bit bigger, would have a little bit longer, maybe a little bit quicker, but he was good enough in those areas where as long as he is seeing the field, right. And trusting his eyes, he can yep. get there and make a play. Um, I, I had no problem with where he was drafted. him. I thought he was, you know, that fifth, sixth round pick. And, uh, but so far, I mean, I think he's, he's kind of outplayed that he has not been a liability, even though he has some negative plays on film. Uh, he has not been a, a liability for Houston, so he definitely deserves mentioned as you know one of the top two, three linebackers yeah. among this rookie class so far. And that type of defense can let him use his instincts and intelligence, yes. and and it kind of it's nice because like Fred Warner, of course, is the epitome of what you want in that defense. But when you have a smart player, they're a keystone player because they get mm-hmm. everyone else lined up, they can clean up some messes. But it's different than Fred Warner, who's like erasing everything over the middle. He's just a clean. He's a clean upper. Like he, he makes sure everything up front's clean. He, okay, well, I'm going to make this tackle for four yards and we're good and get off the field. He's been a better pro than I think I, I already. Yes, he's. I think he's always going to have some limitations, but I think he's been more of a tangible player. I was like, ah, he's probably going to be a special teamer. Mm. He's in there and okay, he's smart. You like him, but I, I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised by Toto so far. Um, and I think Jack Campbell is down the road to be okay. Uh, yeah. I think, oh, yeah. yeah they're easy. They're easing him in. I, I like some of the coverage snaps. Uh, they're just easing him in right now. All right. And you think of D'Amico Ryan's, that Alabama connection. I mean, they love Toto at Alabama oh, sure. and Saban. And all. so, I mean, there's a lot of connections. Texas there. got a lot like, of those types of guys right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of good character guys right now. It's, it's again, another team with good vibes right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so DBs last position here. Uh, I don't think we're going to do specialists. Are we who, who we have for specialists? Hey, Jake Moody. I'm game. We could do it. I mean, we talk a little Jake Moody. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think even, the, you, even the ret- Marvin Mims return. I think he's got Marvin uh, Mims, uh, yeah. Z- Xavier Gibson for the jets. Xavier yeah. Gibson has had. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, Charlie Jones, uh, for the, From, for the Bengals. For Bengals. Yes. Yeah, so, like yeah, Jones too. Uh, but, but all right, let's focus on DBs. DBs. Um, Cause corners. I, look, I, my guy Gonzalez, I gotta, I gotta start with him. Absolutely, uh, he was the rookie of the month of September, defensive rookie of the month of September. CJ Stroud, I believe, was the offensive rookie um, of September. But you, you look at who, what he had to face. I mean, this is talk about sink or swim as a corner, uh, yeah. going up against Tyree Kill and Garrett Wilson and these guys. Uh, more than held his own, had uh, three passes defended, an interception. Uh, had a sack, uh, but it didn't give up a touchdown. Didn't have a penalty. I mean, he he has just been playing solid football. Uh, got hurt against Dallas on Sunday. We'll have to see. Uh, they're saying indefinitely right now. We'll have to see how long this is an injury for him. But Christian Gonzalez ha- definitely have to mention him. And then Devin Witherspoon. Man, the oh Monday God. Night Football game that he had was an All Pro type of performance. Yeah. Um, first fantastic. defensive back in NFL history to have multiple sacks plus a pick six in the same game. So not bad. Um, if you like that kind of thing, um, <laughs> he's been, you know, the reason you love Devin Witherspoon was just the aggressive nature. And yep. there were times where 
you got to learn to balance it a little bit, but he's so uh, just the intensity that he plays with at the position. Um, and he's a, a little bit of a smaller guy. He's only 180, mm-hmm. 183 pounds, but he plays so much bigger than that. Uh, and it's, it's something that shows up in the box score because he will get his hands on the football. He'll make tackles, but it's also something that just, you can tell right away on tape. I mean, you don't have to look for his number uh, with the way he makes plays out there, uh, the way he'll hit you, the way he attacks routes. And so far uh, with Seattle, that's, that, that's what we're seeing. I think he, it was a little surprising that he went top five, but I mean, this was a top 10 pick. So at the same time, it really shouldn't have been. Yeah, he's been. Yeah, of course, the Monday night game helps him stand out. But like ever since right. he came come, came back from the injury, even playing the Lions, he had a couple of rough uh-huh. moments and they had a couple of awesome moments in coverage and and as a run defender. And it's it's cool because so many of those Seahawks defenses, it's it's been outside or sa- outside DBs, you know, corners or safeties. You know, you don't really think of it like having that nickel and the guy, someone in the middle mm-hmm. in the slot making all those plays. And, oh my God, <laughs> you just get him around the ball. And yeah, that he's inside, just ball. outside versatility. That That's key it's with huge. him. Cause he could, it doesn't matter. You want him to play outside. He can do it. Play inside. Yeah. He can do it. I mean, he, I think he's a more natural guy inside. Actually. I think he enjoys playing it more. He yeah. feels like, all right, I can make some real plays here. And so he, he just gets that look in his eyes and like he gets hungry and like, he's going to make something happen. Um, but yeah, you can kick him on the outside and he'll be just fine doing that. Right. It, it lets him get eyes on the ball and get eyes on the quarterback mm-hmm. and that's a, let them use their intelligence. I mean, they're probably another DB will talk about it the same with the slot, but I really think all the, I mean, the first round rookies have been pretty fun. Well, Gonzalez, like you mentioned, Deontay yep. Banks had a nice game mm-hmm. um, actually last night with, uh, I mean, he's asked to run my coverage all the time. I need to watch Julius Brents more for the Colts second mm-hmm. rounder because um, the Colts defense has actually been a little feistier. I know the Rams did fireworks or Stafford did fireworks on them on Sunday, but they've been a little feistier on coverage than I realized. I want to see if Brents is doing anything, so it might be a little premature. But speaking of slots, Probably have to go with what with, kind of might be the prospects of pros MVP so far, and that's Brian Branch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that same thing. Ball player, get him near the ball, let him make plays, and he's been awesome in that role. Um, any other safety or nickel types that maybe you want to throw on outside corner, or any other corners you want to throw on DB wise? Uh, well, I mean, Emmanuel Forbes. Um, I, he had a rough one against the Eagles. Uh, uh, AJ Brown. Him and AJ Brown uh, kept going back and back, back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was that was a little bit of a rough one. I mean, he's given up his share of explosive plays, but yeah. I mean, he's also gotten his hands on a lot of balls. I mean, he's I think he yeah, leads all rookies uh, in passes defensed uh, yeah. with five. Um, so, I mean, he, it, it has been a little bit of, you know, the peaks and the valleys with Emmanuel Forbes. Yep. Um, I did want to mention Keetro Clark, uh, for the Cardinals, uh, Great he, call. he leads all rookie defensive players in snaps played, uh, by a healthy margin. And he has yet to give up a touchdown coverage, which has been good to see for, with him. Um, but yeah, back to branch. Uh, this guy is when we did our predictions earlier in the year, he was my, what betting favorite long shot to yeah. be rookie of the year, uh, mm-hmm. defensive rookie of the year. And I mean, my reasoning was simple. He, he was going to pile up the stats and that's what, you know, the voters look at tackles interceptions last year at Alabama. He was the only player in college football with at least 90 tackles, 14 tackles for loss, two interceptions. So you look towards this year, he's the only rookie so far with at least 24 tackles and one interception. Um, he has been just uh, for a guy this quickly to, um, cause it's side of what, just what the stats say in the box score, the tape, the way he's affecting the game. I mean, you see the anticipation versus both yep. the run and the pass, um, you know, watching the, the Falcons tape, uh, the tackle for loss they had against Bijan, yep. um, several of the plays that he made in coverage. I mean, he's so good at diagnosing and then he plays fast. Yes. Yep. He ran a four, five, eight at the combine, but he plays so much faster than a lot of these four, four defensive backs because of how quickly he's reading things and then reacting. So uh, trusting your coaching, understanding your leverages, uh, he has that. And playing slot corner at a high level in the NFL, it's hard. And Branch is a rookie, and he's doing it very well, which, again, I think that speaks to just how coachable he is, how smart he is, instinctive he is. This was one of my favorite players in the draft. I he was my number seventeenth overall player, and even that looks like I had him too low. So, um, yeah, Branch has been. Uh, hopefully, he's. I know he got banged up uh, last Thursday night against the Packers. Hasn't practiced much this week. Hopefully, he's able to stay out there because he is a true difference maker. Uh, through through four games, the quarter mark, I, he's got to be the defensive rookie of the year, in my opinion. 
I agree with you. Uh, I think just, yeah, box scores obviously is what people are going to look at, but it's just like you feel his presence. And yeah. the Falcons examples are great. Obviously, you had the pick six in week one, mm -hmm. but just the, yeah, the TFL. And then he, on a third down, he's gloving up Drake London on a, on a <laughs> angle route, pressing him and, and just gloving him up. And that should be a true blue X receiver that maybe should give him issues with some strength and, you know, anything. Nope, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, I, I think, yeah, just like Laporta, Branch and Laporta are football players that are good. Yep. We usually say, oh, he's a football player because it's like, hey, he's useful. You know, he's not a star, but it's like these guys are like really good right now. And they're also just bring attitude to their teams and bring just usefulness and good play to their teams. Uh, Branch has been awesome. I, I, I yeah, lo love watching him. I'm glad he brought up Forbes as well. Like he played well against the Broncos, had some, a couple, uh, he had a big turn, uh, takeaway. Yep. Uh, but then, yeah, AJ Brown, uh, kind of. <laughs> Give him a welcome to the NFL. It, that's uh, exactly what it was. Yep. And he talked to him the entire game. Because you can see after the stutter go, Forbes yeah. is on the sideline. And he's just so annoyed. And then they show AJ Brown. AJ Brown's like cackling. Like he's just laughing. It's like, oh, man, those receiver quarter battles. Two Mississippi kids, you know, one went to oh, Miss, one went yeah. to Mississippi State, you know. Yeah. And so it was something that. uh something about the Egg Bowl. <laughs> right, exactly. They, they've they had their battles before. And even with Devontae Smith out there, too. Uh, oh, yeah, they. Yeah. He was, I think, a junior when Forbes was a freshman at Mississippi State. So, yeah. you know, they, they, there's some history there with these uh, th with that matchup. And so Eagles, Washington moving forward should continue to be fun. Right. There's a uh, yeah. When uh, Forbes guards Smith, it's a one guarding a one, but not not receiver and corner. It's just they're, they're literally <laughs> built like the letter, the number one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how they beat your bill. Uh, yeah, it combined there. Uh, yeah, just over what three hundred pounds, maybe. I mean, it's maybe uh, yeah, two, <laughs> two, two two slender guys. They're both smaller than Lane Johnson and like, <laughs> combined. Yeah, that's one Lane Johnson. Are, yes, they're one Lane exactly. Johnson. <laughs> um, so that is it for the rookie discussion. Uh, now let's go to a little prospect discussion just to wrap up this show, Dane. Uh, any matchups, any players that are sticking out for you in week six of college football? Anyone that you want to highlight, may have any of the viewers, any of the listeners pay attention to? Uh, well, we have the Red River shootout, right? Um, Texas, Oklahoma. Um, you know, what's that going to look like with Texas? Kind of, they're, they're being the, the hunted now, right? I mean, they are right. at the they're a playoff contender. They, they look like they have a shot at making the playoffs. And, and this is going to be a big step. They're going to make it. Oklahoma has been good this year. Um, I definitely think Texas should be favored. They, they should win this game. But you never know in this rivalry, uh, especially when uh, Texas just dominated Oklahoma last year in this game. Um, watch for uh, Tyler Guyton, the right tackle. Um, I think he's he was number 31, I think, in my top 50 in the preseason. We talk all the time about how good this tackle class is. Tyler Guyton right there, one of the most physically gifted of these tackles and a, a guy that's uh, getting better and better. So uh, Oklahoma has had a nice run uh, of tackles lately. And uh, mm -hmm. Guyton, former TCU transfer, he's the next guy up. Um, it, I, the other game that I think is going to be appointment viewing is going to be uh, Kentucky going to Athens to play Georgia. Um, I mean, I Kirby Smart mentioned last year that their matchup is after that Kentucky game was the most sore his team has ever been. So uh, Stoops and and his Kentucky Wildcats they bring it, and especially mm -hmm. after what they did to Florida uh, on this past weekend, um, it Averaging was like twenty yards a rush. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, Ray Davis, uh, I mean, one of the best stories in uh, in college football. I mean, he is a guy that like when you do the background work on him like i did over the summer um as i'm working through these guys and i'm like just the more layers you pull back and how interesting you know he was homeless for a good chunk of his childhood he was he was a ward of the state um his parents weren't in the picture through you know the first 16 17 years of his life um i mean it was it just i don't know how he made it out like it wasn't you know it was a situation where st the everything stacked against you but everyone you talk to coaches and every, you know they keep saying kid always has a, a smile on his face like he was and, and listening to him talk after that he had 280 yards and four total touchdowns against florida the first thing he mentions was uh, his offensive line i'm like you know he, he is a he's a guy that gets it and so he is a fun player you get to see what he can do against that georgia defense um and then let's be honest anytime you have a chance to watch brock bowers play um yeah best. take advantage because this guy is a special special player and it's it's funny when you talk to coaches there at georgia they don't mention that he's a four or five tight end or, you know, how the, the sticky hands, that one handed catch that didn't count 
uh, he had another one handed catch yeah, back again. To back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, against Auburn. <laughs> I think we both ridiculous. tweeted at the exact same time too because we're we? like, okay, oh, yeah. look at this, look at this. <laughs> this, this isn't normal. Like, no. I, I, and I think ninety five percent of the tweets i got were like oh yeah this this is not normal this is special and then there's like five percent that are like this gets you excited like he's he's doing it against nobody and like it's like all right guys come on like this is not normal what he's doing out there um but when you talk to coaches it's not the athleticism they talk about they talk about the competitiveness and how and this is something that we've talked about before is because he is he's a master of those hidden yards he gets plays that should get you six seven yards he gets 12 15 Mm -hmm. yards Mm -hmm. because he he can break tackles because he's so tough he's a finisher that grit that he plays with is you know there's nothing finesse about him even though he is quote unquote an undersized tight end because he's going to be probably you know six four even maybe even a little shorter um and uh about 240 some pounds he that that's undersized by NFL standards, right. but he is so physically tough and the play personality uh, that is mentioned it with, you know, that's something that I think everybody needs to do when you talk about prospects is look yourself uh, and be honest. What is his play personality? Devin Witherspoon play personality off, off the charts. Um, and that's what made him a top five pick, even though he was an undersized corner Brock Bowers, he plays a position that you probably shouldn't be drafting top 10, um, especially when you're not that, you know, he, he's a little bit undersized, uh, but you're, he's going to go top 10. I, there's no way the NFL lets a guy with this much talent fall out of the top 10. Um, but because of that, and a big part of it's the play personality, uh, the way he plays, the way he competes as a blocker, as a receiver with the ball in his hands. Um, it, long story short, this, this is, uh, actually sh- short story long. This is why you should be watching, uh, this, uh, K- Kentucky, Georgia matchup because Kentucky will match that grit. Uh, Trevor Wallace, the linebacker is a really good player. Uh, JJ Weaver edge rusher, uh, is a good chance to get drafted as a day three guy. So, uh, th- this will be a fun one. That'll do it for this week's prospects pros. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for Dane. As always, we'll see you guys next Wednesday.